Hi everyone, thanks for stopping back. J Hood Creative here again. So I shot the video you're about to see yesterday before I was on the Comic Core Off the Rails show on Friday night. If you didn't get to see that, I'll leave a link to that show in the show notes down below. Uh, it was a great time. Uh, as I was preparing for, preparing for that show that day, I was going through a bin of some old artwork that I did show some of it. But going through the bin, I, there's more to it. I recorded the whole thing, so that's the video you're going to see. I also wanted to remind you of my contest. Uh, sub, if you're a YouTube com content creator, create a video about your five favorite individual comic books, not storylines, floppy comics. Uh, make the video, leave a note on episode two that you made a video so I can go watch it. You'll be entered into a drawing for a J Hood curation where I'll go and watch your content and put together a prize pack for you that will include a sketch by me and a signature from Stop Gremlins off camera. I'll make a, a, a sketch for you and then uh, I'll pull something from my signature collection from established comic book creators, uh, something I think you'll like. I'll put some other books in there. Uh, if you're not a content creator, leave a comment in video two with your five favorite uh, comic books. Uh, brief de description why. You go into a second drawing and you'll get uh, a smaller price pack, but still good stuff. So, uh, also, I'm available for commissions. I can do anything from like a con style sketch that you get from someone in Artist Alley. All the way up to full-blown painted illustrations, portraits, yada, yada, yada. Okay, Gremlin, go sit back in your seat. Photo bomber. Okay, so, uh, yeah, that's it. On with the video. Okay. What's the video about? That's a good question. Hello, J Hood Creative back again. Thanks for coming back, taking a look at uh, what I have to offer today. I've got my little assistant Bailey and her favorite Ninite here to keep me company. And I've said before, you know, I've just got I've got stuff. I've got stuff to that's sitting in bins that I can't part with, don't want to part with. Uh, but it's worth talking about. It's worth showing off. So. Uh, I had a little time today, and I found a bin of some pretty, you know, I think it's cool stuff. It's stuff that's very uh, connected to me because a lot of it is my artwork and uh, preliminary sketches. But there are also a few knickknacks and, not knickknacks, but keepsakes and things like that. But So this is the bin, and it's heavy. It must weigh... 60 pounds something like that at least 40 it's heavier, heavier than a box a bag of salt so uh, I'm just gonna kind of flip through it and uh, I might say, take some pauses along the way and maybe cut this up into a bunch of different videos or it might just be one long video I'll post someday uh, we'll see how it goes so Okay, so let, let me let me start by saying my day job is at a model kit manufacturer called Round Two LLC, and we own a lot of the big model kit brands uh, that are currently available in the U.S. And so, just a way of prelude, this is one of our catalogs, and I, I happen to have kept this one because I did the the layout I did the design work on the whole catalog uh, but we do everything from 66 Batmobiles to regular cars of all kinds to sci-fi stuff like Star Trek uh, Enterprises and uh, Space 1999 Eagles and things like that it's a spread of a bunch of pop culture um, kits that we've done. Stop. 
So yeah, there's that. So that's that's why we have things like this was a, a pass to see Star Trek Into Darkness uh, pre-screening, I believe. This was a, a flyer we sent to our distributors just about our sci-fi and pop culture model kits. And then we also have uh, an online store called Auto World Store. So this is a, a catalog with a bunch of their product in it. This is, man, it's dusty. This is probably one of the first catalogs round two did. That will be on the front, Enterprise on the back. That's pretty cool. I did this illustration, General Lee versus Batmobile. That's pretty cool. Let's see what else? Uh, we've got a big book on perspective drawing from college. And I'll crack one of these open. So I've done... I've done work in the comic book industry. Uh, it, it's kind of been kind of spotty here and there. I did quite a bit right out of college than I did uh, quite a bit a few years ago. And now I don't do a whole lot. I do other, other work. This was a, a portfolio that I prepared to leave at conventions to, to take on more coloring work. And before I, I show that, so I'll just do a kind of a quick rundown of some of the stuff I've worked on. This was the first uh, color I, or first cover I colored for a guy named Trent Canuga that lived in our area. He, he went on to, I think he works in the video game industry now, designing uh, video game characters and settings and things like that. And Turtle fans, one of the cool things he did, this issue has got water damage, unfortunately. One thing he managed to do was a Turtles crossover. Peter Laird did this cover, so I was able to, to color this whole comic. It was really cool. Back then, I was using airbrush, and I've got samples in here. I'll show you uh, what the real thing looks like in a minute, but it spreads like that. He's, he was very influenced by Todd McFarlane at the time. Don't care. Another guy that worked, this was this is for Lightning Comics, and this one was for Hall of Heroes, though it's not marked on here. Another title, Hall of Heroes, originally published, was called Cyber Frog, and it was created by a guy a lot of people might know now, Ethan Van Skyver. So this was issue two. Was it, I think he only did two issues through Hall of Heroes, but so this was I didn't do the first one. He already had that done by the time we got hooked up, but I colored that one. So this was all stuff in the few years right after college, uh, in the '90s, the late '90s, and uh, I probably I colored, including the the crossover, I colored four full issues of Creed and then I probably did probably at least two dozen maybe more than that covers between uh, Creed and another title called Snowman uh, by Matt Martin. I did uh, work several years ago starting working in computer coloring for our local comic shop that publishes their own comic and actually I, I drew and Drew inked and colored this cover for them. BuyMeToys.com is the name of the store and publisher. And then in some of the issues I did some fill-in pages uh, coloring. I'm not sure if this one has any or not. And then uh, at Buy Me Toys we had a group of comic book creators that were local, or aspiring creators anyway. And we put this issue together. So I, I drew the first page. I drew, I think it was a 10 page story. It was kind of a, a ghost ghost story with a superhero kind of background to it. It was written by a good friend of mine named Al Shell. Uh, he's also a, a local artist. 
and then uh, the book was filled out with a uh, bunch of other great work by local creators. And the, the only book I ever really put my own name on that I I did again with my, with Al Shell uh, was, was this is kind of an American Idol style competition that was put on by Dime Store Press. Uh, this would have been, I think, back in the early 2000s, two, 2006. Early 2006, I would have thought it had been earlier. Um, but uh, so the idea was you put together a pitch for a com your own comic, and then there was a kind of a vote, a community vote. You, we had to send as many people to this website to vote for us. The process was a huge, gigantic hassle. The running of the contest was shaky at best, and by the time we got to the point where, basically, they they, they published the finalists. Uh, they published published twelve page stories, but by the time we got published, none of us had any energy to continue working on uh, on the, the the stuff we had done. But uh, there's a cool page I did. Uh, you'll notice. That, this the one character is kind of similar to Harley Quinn, um, but this I believe this I'm almost positive this predates Harley Quinn rolling with the the, the dual uh, ponytails. But uh, it's, the book's filled with back matter like sketches. They put a big uh, all the character designs are in here. They put a lot of the the feedback and comments from people that were voting so there's that and then this is my most recent comics work a friend of mine was local and has since moved away he and his brother uh, had the means to publish their own comic and I'm not sure if they did much in print other than this issue no they did a few others too but I know they, they published them digitally on comiXology but this is work the the line work the artwork was done by Pat Broderick, who a lot of people know from back in the day. He did Captain Marvel and Batman back in the seventies. Um, I've never met him personally. I understand he's kind of got a cantankerous personality, but uh, and the the work is somewhat hit and hit and miss. But he's doing it for an independent publisher and they, they paid him and they paid me to do the coloring so it is, it's still professional work but it, it's kind of amazing how much she had left in the tank some some like I said, some some pages weren't all that great but some some pages are really cool so back to this thing so this was a portfolio so cover letter I guess I think this was this is a cover from Buy Me Toys. I colored it, and it's like it was uncut or un, unused. I X'd out the back because I didn't do that. And then it's got it's got pages of my story in there of a, of a story I colored. I forgot I did this one. This was by Rick Mays. I think he did some Green Lantern work or something back in the day. And this, this was the coloring style I was doing for the Bobby Toys. So I had all that. And it looks like it's just got printouts of more of my other more recent work in it. And then a, a CD. So this was back in the mid 2000s, probably mid to late 2000s. And uh, the, the deal was, uh, I think it was at C2E2 one year, Marvel had a, a thing where it's just leave your portfolio and 
if we like what we see, we'll call you and set up an appointment to look there at the show or follow up or whatever. And I, I never got a response out of them. So there are those. Okay, so this is a portfolio I kind of put together for doing shows. I did C2E2 a few times, and I've got some original art in here. <clears throat> we republished the Aurora Spider-Man uh, model kit at, at round two. So this is the, the cleaned up, I believe it was probably John Romita artwork. And so I, I just put that in here as the, the line art for the piece I colored. So when I was doing the coloring for Creed back in the day, this was the style. This was kind of the common way of, of doing the more shaded um, comic book coloring back in the day before uh, computers. So what we do is we, it was a photographic pro process of doing photo stats. We do a, one photo stat of the line art on clear film and then one photo stat on paper. You do all the coloring work on the paper and lay, lay the clear film back on top to restate all the line art. And you have to have it perfectly registered together when you scan it. But it, it really creates a really, really clean... Bailey, turn that back on. Uh, a really eye-catching effect. I drew a story for a book called Hope. New Orleans. I can't remember the publisher it was an indie, and it, the the deal was team up with other creators, do a story, do all the work for free. They sell the book and then give the proceeds to. In this case, it was supporting the Hurricane Katrina uh, uh, victims, or you know, helping out that that cause. Uh, and then we were to get a, a copy for free. I never got my copy. Mysterious Mansion is another title that I did a story for, for a local artist named Nick Havert. Okay, so here's a, a cool turtle page. Again, there's, there's little, the coloring work. So I believe I, I I inked these two pages over Casey Hang artwork, who was the the artist on the Oz Wonderland Chronicles. And then this was the coloring job I did on it. More pages. That dude was pretty cool. Uh, Trent Canoe, he had a, a great uh, great uh, imagination. So it's appropriate that he ended up in the video game industry. He was, I don't know, 18 or 19 when he was drawing this stuff. So you definitely see the, the McFarlane, especially the early McFarlane influence on him. But uh, he, he was pretty polished for a kid his age. Colored this over another local artist named Dennis Anderson. Went to high school with him. So here's a page from Snowman. Notice how the airbrushing covered up the line art on the original coloring. Another sweet turtles page. So this is the, the original art for the, uh, the Peter Laird cover. So. This one. There, so you can see the, the his line art. And then with the color. Okay, so I must have just taken those along for the ride. That's what the, the recolored Spidey illustration looked like. Yeah, 
Yeah, this is all just uh, before and after coloring versus uh, line art. That's what the, the original art looked like, and then once it's colored, that's what it looks like. I forgot I did some of these. This was a cool one. And I, I think we did two different versions of this Batman piece. One version was a little bit more gray. I think this was the first uh, Supergirl piece that I colored for Casey. Again, this is Casey hanging at, at Buy Me Toys. He was selling these as posters. That's that more of those I, until I pulled this bin out I totally forgot that I'd done this I think I did this for a convention piece before the Lost Target uh, issue was published I think part of the whole reason we went through that contest was that we would if the timing was went the way it was supposed to we would have had the comics to sell at C2E2 and by the time C2E2 Actually, it was was Wizard World Chicago at the time, but by the time uh, Wizard World Chicago rolled around, uh, the books hadn't been published yet. So I had to kind of cobble this together. We had already book space, so I had I wanted something to sell. I don't I don't think I sold a lot of them, but uh, so this has got it's all sketches, and I think it's got the original more sketches. This is for the the syndication book. Some cool character designs. I think the sketchbooks that these came out of are in there, so I'll pull those out in a minute. The pencils for the Lost Target cover. Character designs. And just a couple pages from the Lost Target story. I did 24 hour comic book day a couple times. This is a cleaned up version of my first attempt. It was called Light Ray Precursor. Light Ray was going to be kind of my, my book, my comic. Uh, I, had, I got a bunch of sketches and character designs and I had the story pretty well thought out but uh, this tied loosely into that, but uh, this kind of deals with uh, racism and in inner city kind of matters and things like that. Uh, when you go into a 24-hour comic book day, the idea is you, you go in without any idea what you're doing, and you sit down and you draw 24 pages in, tw in 24 hours. Uh, so when we got there, the... The, it was at Buy Me Toys again, and so they, they had, uh, just as jumping off points, they handed out uh, cards from Apples, the Apples to Apples game, and the card I was given said, take the skinheads to, take the skinhead, uh, sorry, take the skinheads bowling. So I was like, okay, that, oddly enough, that kind of ties into the loose idea I have. And so we splash page of skinheads going into a bowling alley. And then they, they beat a guy up with a bowling pin. Uh, but it's a, it's a flip book, so it start, one storyline starts on one side and they flip it to the other side and the storyline start a totally different storyline uh, begins and then in the middle 
there's a big dramatic event that ties that's the end of both storylines so you see the you see it crying from this the story of the from the victim's perspective as well as the perpetrator's perspective to line things up the next 24-hour comic book day i did was about my first dog rockwell oh look at that he's rockwell he's a cool dog so the idea behind this was uh, I did it as a 24-hour comic, but I did it in I did it an hour to day, an hour a day over the course of 24 days, and I kept the the art style much more simplified, very cartoony, and um, the dialogue. Other than like the intro page, the, all the dialogue is from the standpoint of the dog. So all he's hearing is blah, 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 and every once in a while he picks up on uh, a, one word here or there, like good boy or out or something like that. The simple words we think dogs understand. Uh, yeah, so it's cute. I've got a stack of those, a stack of those. There's a cute little doodle. Hi guys, fun. I think this is probably just all sketches from uh, going to the comic book store and having our local meetup groups. That's pretty nice. I used to be able to draw. Wolverine head. I say I used to because I find it, I get frustrated now. I'm out of practice. No one's fault but mine. Should put another little sketchbook together though. That'd be cool. I, along the way, I did. Uh, comic strips for a guy that did brick kind of restoration and resurfacing and coloring and he called himself brick man he, he wanted a logo of himself drawn as a superhero and then he published newsletters and he wanted a comic strip in his newsletter that would kind of teach the lessons about brick resurfacing so I did that this is a piece that I ended up enlarging and inking and I was trying to go for a, like a Mobius style look and I wasn't happy with the result and I always threatened to redo it and my good buddy Al that I mentioned before he always laughed at me for always hating my own work. Super scroll. Monkey. <laughs> I went through a Sin City phase for a while. <laughs> Years before Wolverine had flaming claws, here we have a X Men Star Wars mashup. He's got lightsabers for his claws. And then a fairly benign Spider-Man. What else is in here? Oh, that's cool. Okay, so one of the product projects we had in our sophomore year illustration class, and this is one of the things that if, if I had time to do all day, every day, this is what I would do. The, the concept was take a photograph and do a gouache painting of that photograph, uh, I think the size was 
six by nine might even be smaller than that but that's all the beer was supposed to be but uh, the end result is supposed to be photographic copy the photograph make your painting look like a photograph come on there we go so I, I was always pretty pretty happy with that result So we live out in kind of, we're not technically in the country, but in the country is not far from where we are. And around here we have, uh, you know, people raising cattle and uh, lots of corn, but, you know, horses and things like that too. So in this case, we had a family that did horse racing at this kind of on the local level, but I mean legit horse racing. I'm not sure what these little carts are called, but in one case they wanted, this is painted on their wall behind their bar in their basement. And then they liked that one so much that the couple I did that for had another one. They commissioned a big painting for another family member. This is another college project. Uh, you can probably imagine what this was inspired by. But uh, I did a lot of 3D illustration work in college. In this case, it was a mask. It was bad rock, or bedrock, or whatever you want to call it, dude. And then it might, this might be harder to see. This was a like a one foot tall figure I did, sculpty base with just stuff added onto him. It was inspired by a movie. But it was, it was a bomb of a movie. I can't remember what it was, like Outlander. Not Outlander. I can't even remember. Hardware? Hardwired? Something like that. It was odd. But in it, there was a guy in a big hat with a bunch of bandages on him that had come in from the, you know, the outer limits or whatever. More college work. Only well, got a B plus. Oh, well, can't win them all. Turtles page. Oh yeah. This is another college piece similar to that portrait. But uh, this the, the idea here was do a magazine cover, whatever you want. It's good to have but this was probably the only decent bow with that reference available at the time. It's wonderful having Google image search on the internet now. Okay, so another uh, cover I did for Hall of Heroes was for a comic called Bog. And this was the cover for the first issue. It's obviously a swamp creature uh, inspired uh, character. But they commissioned Steve Bissett to draw the cover. So I was able to color over Steve or Steve Bissett. So the color work look like. So when they started the the Creed full color series, I think they did two issues at Hall of Heroes where it was black and white interiors, full color covers. And then Trent moved on to a publisher named Lightning Comics, and they did full color interiors as well. So that's where I colored the interiors. But for the first issue of that, I took Trent's drawing and actually did a full rendered painting. So this was one of the uh, alternate covers. We called them alternate covers at the time, but variants. I want to say. So that was, I have a date on there, 1996, the, the bubble hadn't popped yet, and for Creed number one, the full color Creed number one, there were five or six variants, so that's why I'm a little shaky on the whole variant idea these days. Yeah. 
another college piece. Paint a person as an animal. So that's Sherilyn Fenn from Twin Peaks. I did this as a promotional piece. Uh, I think the part that got cut out, I think, was Exo Manowar. This is a full, cool technique I did in college that I've never tried again, but I've always wanted to. Very watercolory. Oh, what do I got now? An odd issue of Star Trek magazine. I okay, so yeah, got an ad on the back, so that's why I kept that one. More around two covers. This is a cool giveaway we did for shows. We do this for model cars all the time. We would put a miniature box in the, in the package. So uh, you can take this home, cut this out, fold it up, and make your own little miniature enterprise box. Uh, let's see here. Bunch of those. Bunch of those. Wraparound cover for a snowman. Hey man, it was the 90s. Cheesecake was the thing. Actually, one of the reasons I got out of coloring back then was two reasons. One, the, the cheesecake got a little bit too extreme. For what I was comfortable doing and B uh, got a PlayStation 2 was a PlayStation 2 PlayStation 1 and finished Final Fantasy 7 which if you finished Final Fantasy 7 you know how much time that takes you can't do that and do professional work as well don't, don't get hooked on video games kids is this boring or do you like it you're bored. It's a good thing I'm showing you and not showing her. The guy that, that did Snowman had a, a thing for World War II aircraft. That was his favorite plane that he put in that one. Here's a cool double page spread from Creed. It was an underwater scene. More Creed stuff, Creed stuff, Creed stuff. You know, we had Wizard Magazine and a bunch of others, and I, I can't remember what it was, but this was for a cover for a Wizard-like industry magazine. Did a few of these renderings for houses for a local builder. Man, this is only scratching the surface. This illustration for point of purchase display. Ooh, posters. Daddy. Yeah. I'm getting tired. You are? Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe we'll wrap this up. I'm trying to lie down, but there's nowhere. Oh. And I'm getting tired. Okay, we'll wrap this up pretty soon. So, if she's getting bored, you guys are probably getting bored too. I don't think I'm going to carry this on very much longer because it's a lot more of the same. I did the graphic That's design for our, small. our local dare car <laughs> back in the day. I did a. Before I worked at round two, I did work for the RV industry where we did exterior designs, exterior graphic designs. This is one of the, my the biggest projects I ever worked on. This one on the side of a fifth wheel. And this was poignant because this design was adopted less than six months after 9-11 happened. And uh, we had to take the prototype for this design to apply it 
to an RV at a show and had to drive by the uh, the site in Pennsylvania where the the third plane went down. That's what the whole design looked like. Yeah, it's just a lot more of the same stuff. Spe sketchbooks. Let's see if I can find that one sketchbook real quick. One of the Creed variant covers. Man, this thing is old. What thing is old? The sketchbook. I can't really see anything. It's a zone. This goes back to college and before. Hey. A big full illustration of that dude on something. Hello, Very inspired by stormtroopers, obviously. Oh, always, oh. My dream was to always to uh, to be a to become a Movie poster mm -hmm. illustrator. Illustrator. They don't do that anymore. Daddy. They use Photoshop. <coughs> Daddy, they mm -hmm. can both stand. They can. Or All right, I think we've got her enough, at least for now. So we'll wrap this up. Uh, hopefully, you enjoyed sharing. Give a thumbs up. Tap that like button if you like the show. Please subscribe. Uh, yeah. And that was a long video, Daddy. It was. We'll see you next time. Remember, faith, family, comic books. See ya.